Do you ever see something and wonder to yourself, how in the world did they make that? Well, I do, all the time. My name is William Justice, and today we're going to learn how to create this animation in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Even though it looks like it, this animation was not built with any of the 3D tools built into Resolve. It's basically created with a polygon node, some timing adjustments, and an inner shadow effect. The standard shadow effect adds the shadow outside and around objects. With the inner shadow, the shadow is placed inside the object, which creates a really interesting effect. There's not a built-in inner shadow effect in Resolve, but there's many different techniques that we can use to create this effect. By simply changing the size and position of the shadow, we can get a lot of different interesting looks. The dark shadow on the top left gives us kind of an indented look. If we shift the shadow to the other side, the text kind of pops out of the screen just a little bit. It has a 3D look and some dimension to it. If you're enjoying my videos and want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, and creating animations and effects, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really, really helps, and I appreciate everyone's support. Also, make sure that you check out my website, buildjustice.com, for lots of effects and tools for DaVinci Resolve. Okay, let's get started. First, we're going to take a look at how to create the basic inner shadow effect, and then we're going to take that effect and apply it to some polygons and shapes with animations to create the spinning 3D interlocking circles. Okay, here we are in DaVinci Resolve Fusion, and we're going to make some inner shadows. We have a blank fusion composition, and we're going to start with making some shadows, and I'll show you how you can convert it really quickly into an inner shadow. Let's take a background and connect it up to the media out, and we're going to set this, we're going to set this background color to be white. You can set shadows up on any objects or graphics, text, anything that has transparency. Take a text node, drag it in, merge it on top of the background, and we're going to set the text color to a blue, just so we can see it and make it a little bit bigger. Okay, the text is set up and we're gonna just add a simple drop shadow effect with uh, the text node selected. We're gonna hit control space and, and search for drop shadow. And there we go, and you can make some uh, strength adjustments, adjust the angle, the distance, and the blur. So we got, we got a little shadow on our text. That's a basic drop shadow outside of the text or object. To put this inside the text or object, all we need to do is take the text and invert it. And we're gonna do this using a little bit of masking. Let's copy the text node and paste it. Let's take the output of the text and drag it right on top of the merge, and we have our second copy. To build the inner shadow, we just need to create the inverse of our object. We're gonna take a background node, set the color in the background node to match our text color. The color doesn't matter, but I'm trying to keep things a little bit consistent to make it easier to see what's going on. We're gonna take the output of the text node and put it into the background, and we'll take a look at that. That's what we had before. We can add a shadow to it, and it would look just like the other one. We're gonna to go to the background node and hit settings and click apply mask inverted. So all we've done is taken our object, our text, and inverted it. And we're gonna put a shadow right inside here. The way the drop shadow works in some of the other techniques is they put the shadow around the edges of the object. And right here we have an edge, so we just need to drop the shadow right inside of here to create our inner shadow. Let's connect the background up to the output of the merge and take a look what we have. So this background is sitting on top of everything. Um, let me adjust the color just so you can see a little bit what it's looking like. Okay, so the background is the dark blue, and the light blue is this text right here. And the background is just sitting on top of it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take our drop shadow node, and we're going to select background two, and we're going to paste the drop shadow. And you can see the drop shadow, it added the shadow right around where these edges are, and it's actually inside of the text. So let's make a few adjustments here. Okay, there we go. We have a shadow effect, but the background is still showing up. So right here, so all we need to do is mask out everything outside of where the text is. So since this is our text, we're going to add this text as a mask on top of this merge so that, so that only things inside the text are going to show up. Let's take the output of the text and put it into the mask input in the merge. All right, there we go. We have a really interesting looking inner shadow effect. There's probably a lot of different ways to do this, but this one works pretty well and it is not too hard to set up. Let's try a few different things so you can see what's going on here. Let's get rid of the drop shadow. The drop shadow added a little bit of color here. What we're going to do is we're going to take the background and we're going to turn it to black. Outside of the background node, we're going to add a blur. This is just a completely different way to do the drop shadow effect. Um, you can experiment with some different things to get different looks. So background two selected, hit the blur node. We're going to take the blur size and bring it up. And you see we're starting to get that inner shadow effect. Now all we need to do is outside of the blur add a transform node. And we can use the transform to shift where the blur shows up. And we kind of have a, uh, this kind of a different kind of inner shadow look. It's not even a drop shadow. It's just using a blur node and it works great. You can also, you can do this with a drop shadow and it also works great with a directional blur. And we can take the directional blur, adjust the length, play with the angle and has a little bit of a glow. 
All right, now with the directional blur, we can adjust the length of the blur to get some different effects. You can adjust the, uh, the angle. So this works very similar to the drop shot effect. You can add some different things. You can change the opacity. Um, you could even add a blur after this to kind of give a little bit different effect. All right, let's take a real quick look at what's going on here. We're gonna select the, uh, the background. There it is, we're gonna hit the blur. You can see it's blurred a little bit. And as we adjust these settings, you can see where it's blurring this background. And it creates that shape there. And then this text is masking out everything that's outside of the text. So when we remove the, when we remove the mask, you can see what we have here. That's one way to do the inner shadow and resolve. There's some other techniques that you could use, uh, but this will definitely get the job done. Now let's take the inner shadow technique and apply it to some polygons and animate them a little bit to create the interlocking circles effect. Okay, let's start with a blank fusion composition and get this animation set up. It's gonna have a black background, so let's take that and move it to the media out. There's the black background to get us started. We're gonna use the shape nodes that are built into fusion to get this animation set up. Hit control space and search for S polygon. Select the polygon, hit control space, and search for S render. We wanna create a circle shape. Right click in the center, select S polygon polyline, choose create and select ellipse. For this one, you can go with the default. Uncheck solid and let's bring up the border width. So we're gonna put the inner shadow inside of the shape, but the first thing we need to do is animate it. So we move this down. We're gonna copy the polygon and we're gonna paste it and we're gonna take the output of the polygon and put it into this polygon. The second polygon is gonna be used as a reference. As we animate the first polygon, we want it to make sure we want to make sure it lines up with the circle shape. Let's adjust this color here so we can see what it is, and make it a little bit thinner. We have the yellow the yellow circle sitting on top of the white circle. So let's click the first polygon. We're going to delete the top point, and we're going to delete the bottom point. Go to the first frame. We're going to right click and and right click and remove the polygon the polyline, and we're on the first frame. So now we can start animating. We're going to click the animation keyframe. Now you just need to adjust the handles to make it line up with the reference circle. It, it definitely doesn't need to be perfect, just kind of close enough to look right. Okay, let's set up our animation. We're gonna to go to frame 30 and take these handles and spin them around. This is gonna create a kind of a figure eight effect that's gonna look like the circle is kind of spinning and rotating around on itself. Let's go to frame 60, select the right hand point, and we're gonna take the handles and spin those around and create, get back, pretty close to a circle shape. It doesn't have to be exact, you just want it fairly close. All right, let's take a look at our animation. Now we just need to keep repeating this and the basic shape will be set up. So we'll open up the spline editor, select the polyline, select all the points, highlight them, and we're just gonna do the, the ping pong. So the, an the animation is repeating now and we're gonna go select all the points again, uh, highlight these points, and we're gonna hit the curve button. And we'll stretch the curve out. This will just give it, a, give it a little bit of easing as you go in and out of the end points. Okay, we don't need the reference circle anymore because we have the basic shape set up, so we're gonna delete the polygon and delete the merge. All right, uh, let's build the inner shadow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same technique that we did on the text. Let's take a background node here, and we're gonna make this one red and take the output of the render, the uh, S render and put it into the background. So basically we have a red shape there. Just like before, we're gonna invert it and this we're gonna use this to create a red shadow effect. We're gonna add a blur node. That's gonna give us our blurry effect. Let's add a transform node so that we can shift the shadow around. And we're gonna put this all on top of a black background. There's the black background. Take this, take the output of the transform and slide it onto there. And there's our basic shape. Let's tighten this up just a bit. Next, we're gonna take a transparent background to put this on top. I'm doing this extra level to make it a little bit easier to manage. Um, we're gonna take that and put it on top of the black background. And all we need to do is take the output of the S render, I'm gonna move this all this stuff over, Let's take the output of the S render and put it into this merge right here. And that's it, you can see the shape. You can see the shape with the red shadow. So we're gonna use the transform and just move this shadow around. For this effect, it works best if it's on, if the shadow is on the bottom right and bring down the blur just a little bit. All right, that's gonna get us started. Now, the other thing we wanted to do, and this is the reason why I set up this structure here, is because we're gonna make another outline, a kind of a white outline going around the top to kind of give it a little pop on that side. So we're gonna take these nodes right here, and we're gonna copy them, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit um, Alt and make a little point right here. I'm gonna break that off. So now that we have this little pipe router thing, we can take the output of that 
and put it into the mask on the merge. And we can take the output and put it into this background here. Like I said, we want this one to be white. So we're gonna set the color to be white. And this one's not gonna have near as much blur on it. We're gonna take the output of the first shadow and put it into this merge here and break that off. I'm gonna take the output of this merge and put it to the foreground there. That, this way we can use this one node to mask off both of these shadows. Now the shadow we just wanna take, um, let's click the transform on the white shadow and we're gonna slide this so that it is on the top left. And I'm gonna take down the blur a little bit because I want it to be kind of a sharper edge. Adjust the, I just want just kind of a thin line there. You can also, um, to, to make adjustments, you can play with the blur and adjust the transparency and opacity of these things. Okay, that looks great. So the reason I set it up with a pipe router is I wanted kind of one input to go into a group that makes gonna make this a little bit easier to manage. So we're gonna select all of these nodes and hit Control G and we have our group. I'm gonna take the group and merge it on top of the background. So you can play with the colors, the shadow settings, the links, the opacities to get kind of different looks for the shadows and 3D effects. Now that this is set up, we just need to do a little bit of copying and some adjustments. Let's copy the polygon, the render, and the group, and we're gonna hit Control Shift V to create instances so that any changes we make to the original will show up on all of them. Let's take the output of the second instance and merge it in. We're gonna add a transform node. And with this transform node, we can just shift this over. And we wanna set them up so they're, they're overlapping just a little bit. Highlight the first three nodes again and copy them and hit Control Shift V. And we have instances for, the, and we've created instances for the third circle. Let's add a transform node. And we're gonna take this one and slide it over to the left. Um, so then the next step is to colorize these. We could go into each one individually and kind of de-instance some stuff, de-instance the uh, background nodes and colorize them, but we're just gonna use a hue shift to do this. It's a really quick way to colorize things. So outside of this instance, select the uh, select one of the instances, hit control space and search for CC, which is gonna bring up a color corrector. And we can take the color corrector and just adjust the hue. Make that one blue. And outside of this instance, we're gonna hit control space CC color corrector, and we're gonna adjust this one. Let's try to make it maybe a green there. So we got the uh, the red, blue, green. This white line's a little too harsh, so I'm gonna take open up this group and go to the merge where the white line comes in. I'm just gonna bring down the blend. That looks a little bit better. Um, so now we're gonna add some rotation. I'm gonna take these groups and we're gonna bring them down a little bit, and we're gonna rotate the, um, let's add a little spin to make this just a bit more interesting. Um, so outside of this first shape render, we're going to just focus on this red shape here. We're going to add a transform node, go to frame one, hit a keyframe on the angle. Let's go to frame 90, set the angle to 360. So it's going to, it's going to spin around once every 90 frames, spline editor, select all the, the frames for the angle, highlight them and choose set relative. So it's just going to keep on spinning throughout the entire animation. And the next step is to take this transform and apply it to the other shapes right now it's only the red shape that's spinning. So we're gonna hit the transform, hit control C. We're gonna select the top transform for the second shape. This is the one that shifted it over and hit control shift V. And that's gonna spin it along. And the green shape, we're gonna hit the transform that shifted over, hit control shift V. And there we go, all the shapes are lined up and spinning. Now, now the next step is to offset the shape animation so that they have a little bit more of an overlap look. So with the second instance right here, this is this shape, this is the, the blue shape. We could shift keyframes around, but we're gonna use a time speed node to make this a lot easier. So hit control space and search for time speed. And all we're gonna do is set the delay to minus 15. And that's gonna offset it negative 15 frames from the baseline. We're gonna do the same thing for the green shape, hit control space and search for time speed. And we're gonna set this one to negative 45. Now the shape animations are offset. It looks like they're kind of more intertwining and spinning inside of each other. Next, we just need to fix where they're overlapping to make it, little, 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 to make it look a little bit more like they're interlocking and fixing in together. We're just gonna use a blend mode to do it. All right, so you can see as we change the apply mode, we're gonna get different effects here where the blue and red are overlapping. So we wanna, we wanna make them look like they're more joined together. For the blending modes to work properly, the background needs to be transparent to create the effect that I'm looking for. So we're gonna take this background and bring the alpha all the way down. So we just see our shapes. We're gonna add another black background and we're gonna take this and merge the 
full composition on top of this background and then send it to the media out. So we really get the same thing, but it's just there's transparency around where our shapes are. So we're going to go to this mer the second merge here and we're going to set this to I'm going to set the blending mode to darker color. And you see where the where they intersect, it looks like they're more overlapping and they're kind of built into each other. Let's do that for the green one. Set the merge, we're going to set it to darker color. And that's the basic animation that we're going for. And because of the way that we set this up, everything is instants off of each other. So it makes it really easy to change things. So let's take this polygon and maybe we want to make it uh, adjust the border width. We can make it thicker or thinner. And we can even do the position effect because we adjust the position and length as the animation is going. And of course, we can go into our group here and adjust any of these settings. So if we wanted to change the blur, we could make kind of a harder edge or more of a soft edge and as well as go to this transform and adjust the blur position to create uh, different kinds of effects. So there you go, inner shadows to create a fake 3D animation. Looks pretty interesting. Um, let me know if you like it. If you have any comments, questions, um, put them down below. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways to do these kind of effects. This is just a simple way to create an inner shadow and use it for something interesting. Thanks for watching. A lot more DaVinci Resolve goodies coming soon, I guarantee it. Like this video and subscribe to my channel to make sure that you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.